You know, Brian, don't pretend I don't know what you said about me in the last episode. Well, in all fairness, I don't think it was anything that wasn't true. You didn't win a title with Arsenal in nine years, so even you admitted it yourself on the video. It was one save where I didn't do that well. One save! But that save is also the flagship of your channel, so... I feel a lot better about this team this year, and I've had a really good window, so there's plenty of transfer business for you to cover as well, so I'm doing you a favour. Ooh, thank you so much. Who have you signed? Mo Durame. That's original. I mean, you couldn't even keep it to yourself. You plastered it all over Twitter. And you mentioned it in the first episode as well. Honestly, having a go at me, take a look at yourself, mate. My accent is slipping. I get too excited when it comes to Durame, okay? I have a problem. I accept that. On honest though, thank you though for the transfer news because it does look like I'm in a little bit of trouble with Southgate and Winks because they, they heard what I said in the first video. So I've been laying low here in the office. Ah, oh, don't worry, they're not going to come after you, mate. You know Gareth and Harry, it's not in their nature to attack. Yeah, that, that is true. This might sound controversial, but I don't think you're a particularly likeable character. Well, I don't think that's particularly fair. Look at the amount of likes that came in on the videos. I was the first thing they saw in that, so... I must be doing something right. How is your hair so shiny? How does your hair look that bad? Yep, too shy, fair enough. Hello viewers and welcome to episode 2 of my FM21 beta save with Leicester. First off, I want to say a massive thank you to all the people that watched uh, the season opener and also left a like on the video. You guys absolutely smashed the target at 25 likes I needed to be able to do a double upload day. So here is the first one for you. And of course, it is the season opener against Tottenham. I would call them title rivals, but we're not going to win the league and neither are they. So let's just say they're Europa League rivals. A little bit of... Tottenham banter there for you all. Uh, you can't go wrong with a bit of Tottenham banter. Actually, most North London clubs are banter FC at the moment. Sorry. Sorry, Arsenal fans. No offence meant. Sorry. Take a joke. The important thing to know that a lot has happened. And obviously, we are at the moment in a bit of a, a weird situation because it's the 12th of September and the season is only just starting now. Whereas, obviously, normally the season would be in August. So, it looks like FM have taken lockdown into account. It's really well done so far. I've really enjoyed the game and I've enjoyed the transfers a lot. And I'm about to walk you through why. I would like you to know that there are still ongoing transfers that I have not completed yet. But, let's get through the ones that have been done. And we'll start with the outs, as we would normally do. And, of course, Islam Samani has gone. All right, he went for £7.5 million to Zenit St. Petersburg. Gone over and joined Dejan Lovren in the Premier League Rejects Club. More than happy to let him go. Plus, it was a lot of money off of there. He was on 80k a week. So, to get him off of the bill, very, very important. This one was a little bit harder to do, and that was Damari Gray. The only reason I let him go is because he was 24 years old. Still young, obviously, but... Not with the same potential as he normally would have had done at the start. He's gone from kind of being a really, really good player to looking a bit more like an Adam Ola Lookman. And that is no disrespect in the slightest, but they can only ever be a kind of good Premier League level player rather than the kind of standard that I am looking for. I haven't exactly brought someone in to replace him, but there's something in the works. He went for £16 million, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Kalichi Inacho is gone. That one's a little bit debatable. £17 million, pounds, though, from Crystal Palace was enough to sway me to let him go, but only because I brought in a better player as a replacement. And I'm sure you guys will agree that he's better. Again, we'll get on to him in a bit. I'm sorry, Kalichi. It didn't need to be this way. Then we got rid of some of the kind of stragglers of the side. Uh, Daniel Almaty was a player that's decent, but never really going to achieve much. Uh, wise movie. I've sold him for £15 million pounds to Ajax, which I think is a very good deal. Now, this one was actually a bit of a tough one because I really like Mendy as a player, but I thought he was younger. Turns out he's 28 years old. I thought he was 21, 22. So I got that very, very wrong. And that is the reason why I've let him go. We're a little bit stacked now in terms of central midfield. And I still have some options available uh, that I'm waiting to confirm on yet. So we'll get around to them in a bit. But I let Mendy go. He also went to Ajax. And I think it was for, yeah, 11.75 million, which isn't too bad. He's played two games and then played at 6.4. So, Mystic Mike, I know. So in total, all of them have left me with £65 million to spend, essentially, with a little bit of cost. Let's say £60 million. What have I spent it on? Ooh, I'm glad you asked. 
We'll start off with a loan signing because I always like to get in a sneaky loan. And it's a player from last year that many of you will know very well. And that is Emil Smith-Rowe. Now, brought him in from Arsenal. I said I didn't get a like-for-like -like replacement with Damari Gray. Arguably, Emil Smith-Rowe is better on paper. Okay, that's the fans. On paper. You have to say that he does it pretty good. The other thing that's great about him is that he can play anywhere across that front line, which is the other reason why I bought him. is mainly for versatility. I've got a lot of good standout players in each position, but not a lot of players that can kind of interlink in between them all, which is why I think Smith Rowe is brilliant. The fact that I'm only paying him 10 grand a week as well is is amazing. I'm basically just paying you know a decent Premier League player 10 grand a week. It's great. This is a player I've always wanted to sign, but never actually got round to doing it because I feel like he does represent really good value, but he never quite lives up to the billing, and that is Tin Yedvaj. Again, and the main reason why I brought Tin Yedvaj in is because he is a fantastic utility man. He is essentially, I'm going to call him the Croatian James Milner because he can play anywhere in the midfield and anywhere on the back. He's absolutely brilliant in that respect. Uh, it's got some decent attributes, to be fair, as well. It's, it's physically, he's pretty good. He's still only 24 years old. The main thing about him is that you can tell now he's valued at £7.5 million. I bought him for 2.4. That is the main reason to get Tin Yedvaj, is that he's brilliant cover. He knows he's not going to be a first-team player. He's happy to sit behind Ricardo Pereira and James Justin. And he's, well, he doesn't know about Justin, but we'll get onto that later. But a really good stand-in if anyone gets injured for a long time. And trust me, it seems to be that that's going to happen a lot. We'll, uh, <coughs> we'll we'll get the obvious one out of the way. Um, I bought Dorame, naturally. I The people that didn't watch any of my series last year, in the lead save, I bought Mohamed Dorame. He's amazing. And there's a song for him, but I'm not going to sing it right now. Because A, it's quite late at night, because I'm still recording for the second episode in preparation for the double upload day. And more importantly, is that he's probably not going to feature for the first year or so, like in a in a big capacity. Bought from Copenhagen again. Reason I bought him three million pounds. Anyone saw it on Twitter? I put it out as a minor spoiler, so I'm terribly sorry. But it was drama. I got too excited. Things were said. Things. Let's let's not talk about it. And now on to the two bigger signings, and the first one of those is Divock Origi, who I bought in for twenty million pounds. It was a choice between him and Musa Dembele. If I was just going for a striker and I didn't have Vardy, I would have gone for Dembele. Okay, but because I was talking about utility players, Divock Origi for me fits the bill perfectly. He can play anywhere across the front line. He's going to be a brilliant backup. I think he's slightly better than Ian Acho. Year older, but also has more pedigree. Has been away, one thing, scored big goals, important goals. Divock Origi is an upgrade, and that's the way that I'm looking at it. So Ian Acho for £17 million, bring Origi in for 20 million pounds, 3 million pounds for a better player. That's essentially the way that I look at it. I don't think you can disagree that he's still got some of his best years ahead of him and he'll be a bit part player. Actually, he won't. It'll be an important part. He will be an important part. He will score goals this year. I can I can assure you of that. Actually, don't hold me to that. And now it's something like the big signing or the biggest signing so far is what I should be saying. And that is Toon Coop Miners. A player who is amazing on FM. I've never played with him, but my God, is he good. Bought him from AZ Alkmaar, and I bought him for a whopping £22.5 million. Pounds. It's nothing. Look at him. Look how good he is. He's listed as a star player, and he is a star player. He can play at the back, he can play in the centre of midfield, and he can play as a defensive midfielder as well. He can play absolutely anywhere. He's going to be sick. I can absolutely assure you he's going to be amazing. Physically, very, very good mentally is where he excels he's just got everything you could want in terms of pretty much everything that needs to be there is 13s or above the determination of 18 is good the work rate is good the passing of 15 is good penalty taking 18 all right we know it's gonna be a penalty taker when jmo is not around technically very good as well i just think he could be absolutely amazing the fact that he's only 22 years as old coop miners is an absolute it's a beauty him and indeedy try getting through that i dare anyone so that is essentially what I've done so far. So I've spent £99 million. I haven't spent that, obviously. We bought Fafan, we bought Timothy Castagna. I wasn't there for that. But we have bought in a fair amount of money as well. £113 million to be exact. I think the thing is now, I look at the team, especially in the centre of midfield, and I sit there and I think, there are a few teams in the league that have got a better selection of central midfielders that aren't the superpower teams, a.k.a. Liverpool, Manchester City, and probably now you'd argue Chelsea. Those three teams have got a ridiculous midfield. I would easily put ours up alongside Arsenal's, Spurs's, and potentially even uh, Manchester United's. I'd say that ours is nearly as good as they are. And there's only one way to find that out, and that's by testing them against Spurs. 
I'll quickly walk you through a couple of the other transfers though, that I've got going on in the background. The one that I'm really trying to push through is the sale of Jose Perez. Uh, not because he's a bad footballer by any means, but it's more the fact that he's 27 years old. He's pretty good as a utility player, but I'm not really that bothered about keeping him uh, because I can get him better players, and that player probably is going to be Jeremy Bogger. Uh, I'd need a real out-and-out class right winger when Chegi is under isn't really playing, and Bogger fits that description perfectly so expect Jeremy Bogger to hopefully be in by the start of next episode or potentially Ennis Bardi who looks absolutely amazing 25 years old though so he's a little bit older but looks amazing as well and maybe there's some defensive backup I've been looking at Bremer from Torino because he's dirt cheap but he might not really be fitting the bill I'm not 100% sure on him let's put it that way at the moment I've got it just as an in case but I might not need him especially because I forgot Kutma I was going to play a centre back it's good that I'm keeping track of who plays where. So we might as well start. And I have to say, I, I, I don't know if I report that as a bug or not. Hey, sorry, Arsenal fans. I'm really laying into the Arsenal and North London clubs today. It's just banter. It's just banter. So this is my first game on FM because I've not played any of the friendlies. Okay, so this is my first game as well. Tactical meeting. What does this mean? This is basically the backroom staff telling me what I need to do. This is interesting then, so they've changed the way that they've done the risk of injury and the actual way that the guys are fit, I think it's safe to say, so the same maintaining sharpness. This is all very interesting, a very different way of doing it. I'm not sure if I like it or if it's a little bit OTT, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it, let's give it a go though, it looks quite interesting. Anyway, in terms of the team like them, we're going to go for Spurs today, I don't want to sit back and wonder what if, I'm a very attack minded man as we all know. So, what I've done then, is I'm hoping I can get these two to work brilliantly, as in Ndidi and Tielemans together. If I can get them working in tandem, we're going to be an absolute business. First of all, we're playing a Gigan press system, okay? We're playing the 4-3-3. This is essentially what I had last year, apart from that we've not got the number 10. I've got a defensive midfielder, because I still want to give Spurs some sort of respect. Uh, and this is, to be fair, the way that makes football's kind of going these days. It's less 4-2-3-1, more 3-3-3. So, I'm just going to test it out, because I've not changed any formations. So, let's go with this. Schmeichel's in goal, Justin's at left back, Fafana's in the middle, with Kagasol in and Castagna's the right back. Obviously, Ricardo Pereira's out injured, Johnny Evans is suspended, otherwise he'd be in for Fafana. Okay, so this kind of explains what I mean by at the centre-back, I'm not 100% sure if we're strong enough, which is why I want to get Bremer in at the same time. In terms of the midfield, then you've got Koopminers and Didi and Tielemans. I'm hoping they'll all form a really good, decent partnership in the midfield, because that, as a midfield free, is very strong. You add Madison to that, Maybe there's the potential for us to even go to a diamond, which would be very exciting. Harvey Barnes is going to be playing on the left. Chegis Under is going to be playing on the right. And Jamie Vardy is obviously leading the line up front. In terms of new signings, then Koopman is obviously making his debut. Uh, and this Fafana would be making his debut as well, as would Castagna and Chegis Under. So there's a lot of new players in this team. On the bench, though, we've got Divok, Origi, and Tin Yedvaj. In terms of new signings, those are the only ones that are there. This is new then, so your tactical decisions always elicit a reaction from the squad. So Fury team them into that tactical familiarity with the formation. That's interesting. Hopefully he'll get over it. <laughs> what a great, what a great bit of management that is, Mike. Oh my god, what's this? Hello everyone, post-production Mike here. Prepare to have a bit of a laugh because you've already probably heard the sound in the background. It's the sound that no one ever plays on FM because it's the stadium effects, etc. But this numpty didn't realise that because he didn't have his headphones on. So enjoy me trying to talk over the sound of the dull. If I could find a way to get it out, I would. But I'm not that technically much of a whiz. Which is weird because if I keep admitting that on camera, it's going to put me out of a job. I can cut that out myself. This is ultimate 4 4 breaking. To clarify, he does figure out in a minute. It just takes a little bit of time. Official team sheets. This looks good. Simon Hooper's the... I really like this. And they also give you staff reaction to team news that we've said go out and kick the crap into Harry Kane. We can we can do that. We're going to put hands in pockets to go, I expect to win today. For Fafana's demotivated, so is Kaglar and so is Kasper Schmeichel. How can that be right? Go defenders. And then, yes, I can. Put hands together. I have faith in you. Get out there and make the difference. He still hasn't realised yet. I love the layout though this year. It, it seems a little bit busy at the start, but once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Here we go. Now, this is what I've been really interested to see, is I've wanted to see the game engine for a little while now, because apparently it's got real upgrades. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our normal one. We'll have key highlights. Uh, camera is on director, which is fine. 
I'd get the match speed down between highlights, match speed during highlights there, text only highlights, get that down to that. They've given you different options on the replays now as well. You can have disallowed offside goals, disallowed goals in general, missed penalties, clear cut chances. That's exciting. To, yeah, so this is how you monitor it. This is really good. I really like the way they've done this. So off we go then. And light bulb moment. Hold the phone. I'm not sure if you guys can even hear me there because there's sound. Sounds off. Never ever have the, the camera sound in Football Manager. As Harvey Barnes already goes in towards the byline. Doherty makes a decent tackle. I really like the way this looks. Uh, Eric Dyer. We can definitely get Eric Dyer if we can. Regwell on such a great signing for Spurs. It's very irritating. And Dombley gives the ball away there. Though, and that's well done by Coop Miners and Kagla and shoot. Right. We're on the attack here now. We're looking for Vards over the top. It's always a good good tactic. Tielemans. Lovely ball. He's into Vardy. Oh, <laughs> It's a great save by Hugo Lloris there. Oh, it wasn't a save, it went wide. I'm not sure, still not sure about the hearts in terms of like the fitness. I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about that. I like having the percentages in terms of the, the hearts, if that makes any sense. And I can't tell if it's inspired my team or not. I didn't really see where it said if they were motivated or not by what I said. Well, nil nil at the break. I mean, it's not been the most exciting game, but we've had a couple of highlights. And I have to say, I've been very impressed with the way that it looks. We've got half time backing advice. What's this? Basically, we've absolutely battered them because look at that. We've had 17 shots, five on target. So our XG target is going uh, out through the roof. Oh my god, you can throw a water bottle. I, I know that we were all joking about it, but yes. I guess our hands together. We've been the better team here. Keep doing what you're doing and we'll be just fine. Come on then, boys. Out we go again. Um, I have to say, guys, what are you making of this? If you've been playing the FM21 beta, what have you been making of this new setup? I really like this. A lot. I think this is a vast improvement. A vast improvement. Uh, I gotta go. I'll go encourage again. I'm wondering if we, I can make an attacking change here. Oh my god, you can do it down here. This is amazing. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take Coop Manners off. I'm gonna bring on James Madison because I think Madders has got this and he's got something in his locker which we can really use. So I'm gonna get Madders on, get him on an attacking midfield or attack. I'm gonna let the boys go for it a little bit. And I'm going to stop indeed being a box to box and get him playing as a deep line playmaker on defend. Get him to sit back a little bit, but just force the issue a bit more. Get Madison on because he's the man that can make stuff happen out of nowhere. And funnily enough, as soon as I bring him on, there's a highlight. They shouldn't be able to create anything because Harry Winks is on the pitch. So you can't really pass a ball forward if you're going sideways, can you, Harry? James Justin's done very well today, and indeed he into Tielemans. That midfield pivot is so good. Indeed he ball over the top lane for Castagno. He whips it in. Madison! Oh, he's did it over the bar. Unlucky Jamo. It's going to get annoying there. I've got to, I have to call him Madders. And then Vards is going to have to be... Well, I was going to say Jamo, but he might as well just be Vards. Because that's what I just called him. Free kick. Madders whips it in. Vardy! Get in! Jamie Vardy. Oh, you get. He's, he's, has he disallowed it? I wondered if it was offside. Has he disallowed it? Oh, there's VAR, but like it's coming up properly. I think they're going to disallow this. He was off. Uh, is he onside or is he off? Nah, he's miles off, to be fair. That's a good decision. It's a great decision. It's an annoying decision. Five minutes to go. I don't think we're going to get anything out of this. I'm going to bring on Yedvaj for Timothy Castagna because Castagna is absolutely shattered. So let's bring on Yedvaj for his debut as well. He's only got the last five minutes. I'm going to be a little bit... I don't want to say disappointed if we beat. If we don't beat Spurs. Don't you dare. Winks. Great take by Casper Schmeichel. They didn't have anyone in the box there, really, while I say that. Look at them all running back. But it didn't feel like it. That's a great ball by Casper. Now we're on the counter. This is where we are good. Go on, under. Chiggies. Dinks it. Divock! Oh, Divock. Oh, Divock Origi. That was your moment, mate. It's the 90 second minute. We've won the ball back here again. Oh, no, under's giving it away. Not to Winks. Not after all the crap I've given him. Thank God for that. Thank God it was Harry Winks and not the other Harry, because that would have been embarrassing and very frustrating. Well, a nil-nil. We absolutely battered them. I mean, look at that. That tells you everything you need to know. We absolutely battered them during that game. We just didn't didn't get the goal we deserved. But in terms of performance, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to say I'm happy with that performance. I'm pretty happy. Lots of players that are motivated and inspired. I like that. It's a little bit more all over the place. But I quite like the way that they've done it, if that makes any sense. I'm feeling quite good about that. That was a decent, sol solid first performance, I have to say. Because Spurs are going to be our rivals come the end of the season. We are going to be 
around about the same place. So to have that was a really, really big thing. I'm, I'm pleasantly quite surprised. Should we do a press conference? Because no one ever gets to see press conferences in these. So let's do a press conference together. See, now you've got all these guys matched up here who are meant to be sitting in all these chairs. And then they've got ways of reacting with you, which I quite like. They're encouraged or slightly positive. Some are reserved because they're knobs. So I think then, really, we have to look at where we're going to come back later on today. And there's one fixture already that's really screaming out at me. Actually, there's two. Uh, I'm not going to play Spurs again on camera. But I'm thinking what we can do is we can play Liverpool at home. And let's play Villa away as well. I think that'd be quite good. There's going to be a little bit of a gap in between because naturally... I always pick it when there's a gap in between. That really shouldn't be a Spurs game. Unfortunately, that is... Uh, it's a bit of a bug, but we will sort it. I'm hoping or SI will sort it at some stage, bless them. Uh, but the way first impressions of the game are that this is... A, a, I don't want to say it's a massive step up. The UI is very, very different to the way that it was before. And in some ways, I think it's an improvement. And in some ways, I think it's a little bit busy. But that might just be because I've spent years playing FM the same way with the same UI. So I think that there's it will probably be an improvement in the long run. But so far, I've been really, really impressed with it. I love the match engine. That was my first experience of the match engine. The more I get used to it, the more fun it's going to become. But I really, really enjoyed that part of it. So next time round, we're going to come back for the game at Villa Park. And then we're going to be hosting the Premier League champions. Very, very exciting indeed. Let me know how your FM saves are going on. Are you enjoying yourself? Are you having fun? And more importantly, are you enjoying this series? Because if you are, you know what to do. Drop a like on the video. Share and subscribe. Make sure that you come back for the next episode. There'll be more signings. Plenty of action, plenty of games, and hopefully plenty of goals. Let's hope so anyway. Thank you so much for watching the episode. Take care of yourselves, everyone. Until I see you again for another episode of my FM21 series. Stay cool. Love it. Really good.